Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. In this picture, the lighting is quite literally the subject. This is a picture of a flash head showing the modeling lamp and flash tube. Although it looks very simple, there is a bit of technique to get it right. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Right, so there are two basic types of uh, flash head. This is a monoblock, uh, and this uh, contains um, all the uh, power and electronics. Uh, and this particular one is a battery-powered monoblock, so it has a battery on the side here. Uh, and then at the front here, we have uh, a flash tube and a modeling light. And the whole thing is in one unit. Now, the other type is what I'm going to be using today, and that is where you have uh, a separate head. So this is literally just the flash tube and the modeling light. There's a small fan in here as well, just to keep the whole thing cool. And this plugs into this power pack. And this supplies all the energy for this head. It makes the head very light and also allows you to increase the amount of uh, energy storage. So this, for instance, is a 2.4 kilojoule uh, flash unit. OK, so in order to be able to see what's going on inside uh, this, what I'm actually going to do is take the, uh, the glass dome off the top of it. So first of all, I'm just going to pop it on this stand, like that. There we go. We take the dome off the top. And that reveals um, the flash tube itself, which is this bit around here. And in the centre here, we have uh, a modelling lamp. This particular one uh, is a tungsten halogen modeling lamp. Uh, these days you also get LED versions of this, but it's the same principle. The next thing I'm going to need is my camera. So I'm using this full frame digital SLR uh, with 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front of it and a flash sync trigger on the top. Now this flash sync trigger will talk to this uh, power pack in order to uh, sync it up and also uh, control the amount of energy. Uh, now the whole camera is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to see the results as we go along. So the next thing we're going to need for this particular shoot, because I'm going to be using relatively low shutter speeds, uh, is a tripod. Here we are. This is uh, what I'm going to be using today, so I'm just going to place this about here somewhere. Uh, and this has a, a geared uh, centre column and a geared head, which will allow very precise control over the uh, direction of the camera. So I'm just going to pop the camera on the top there, like this. So the next thing to do would just be to line up the shot. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is just zoom that in all the way to the 70 mil end, something like that, and then we'll just focus that up. There we are, something like that. So with that now done, the next thing to do would be just to turn the camera on, and we can see that the software has recognised the camera, and on here I can see that these are the settings that I have on the camera at the moment. It's in full manual mode. Uh, I've got a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, 100 ISO at f8. So with these settings, I'll just grab an image uh, and see what we get with no flash. OK, and you can see from that that we're getting uh, a few highlights from the house lights, just catching the shinier parts of the subject. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just change the aperture from f8 uh, to f16. Like that. We'll just grab that again. There we are, that's more or less got rid of them. OK, so the next thing to do would be to turn the flash on. Now, as I said earlier, this pack uh, has quite a lot of energy. This is 2.4 kilojoules. So what I'm going to do is start with an energy level of about a tenth. So I'll turn the head on, like that, 
OK, so with that on, I'll turn the flash sync trigger on. We'll just grab an image. OK, so you can see from this that even at f16, uh, this is incredibly bright. And don't forget, this is at uh, one-tenth of its uh, total energy. So I can actually take that down even further. So I'll take it down to point 0.1, like that, which is the lowest it will go. And we'll grab another image. And once again, you can see that um, it really doesn't make that much difference. It's still way overexposed. So to counteract that, what I'm going to do uh, is make use of this 10-stop uh, uh, filter. So this is a neutral density filter, uh, and it will take 10 stops out of the exposure. So what I'll do is just pop that on the front of the lens, like so, and we'll grab another image. There. OK, so what you can actually now see is the plasma inside the flash tube, which forms uh, the flash that uh, you use for your photography. But it's a bit dull. So what I'm going to do now is increase the energy level in the flash. From point 0.1, I'll take it back up to 1 again, initially. We'll grab that again. Yeah, getting there. I think I'd like it a little brighter than that. So I'll take that up again to 2. So that's a full stop I've added. There, that's the right sort of level. So with those settings then, with uh, 250th of a second as a shutter speed at f16 and an energy level of 2 on this flash pack, uh, I'm getting the right sort of uh, exposure for the tube itself. But I want to be able to capture uh, the modelling lamp as well. So what I'm going to do now is turn the modelling lamp on, like so. And I've initially set that to be on its maximum uh, power. OK, so the modelling lamp's on. Let's grab an image and see what we get. Well, you can see the element inside the lamp itself glowing but it is only glowing. Don't forget we have a 10-stop neutral density filter on the lens of the camera. So in order to make this uh, a little more prominent, what I'm going to do is change the shutter speed. From 1 250th, let's take that down to maybe a tenth of a second to start with. So that's made it a bit brighter. Go a bit lower than that. I'll go to a quarter of a second. There, that's nice. So now we have um, a good mix of the uh, tungsten lamp in the middle, which is obviously very yellow in colour, as you can see from this, and the flash, or the plasma, in the tube, uh, which is uh, more neutral in its colour density. OK, so for the head, I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. That's quite a nice uh, image. But you can't actually make out anything else on that flash head at, at all. So what I'm going to do is add uh, another flash just to illuminate the actual body of the head itself. OK, so I'm going to make use of this monoblock that we mentioned earlier. Uh, and I'm just going to place this at the side here, so that I can uh, put a softbox on this to illuminate the side of the uh, flash head, just along here. So here we have a small softbox. So I'll just place this on here. There we are, something like that. We'll just turn that on. OK. And once again, this is set on an arbitrary energy level 
Uh, so we'll just grab an image to see what it looks like. OK, and you should be able to see that there is absolutely no difference between having that on and not. Now that is because we still have that 10 stop uh, neutral density filter on the front of the lens. So what I need to do uh, is take that off. But if I take that off, all this will be far too bright. So what I'm also going to do is turn this pack off. So that will turn off the modeling light and stop the flash firing. So with that off, I'll now just take the filter off the front of the camera without moving the position of the camera at all, which is quite important, I'll grab another image. Now in this image you can see that we've got the highlight I wanted that runs down the side of the flash head, but we also have all these various highlights from the house lights. Now that's because we still have a quarter of a second set. So I need to now increase that back up to the flash sync speed for this camera which is 1 250th of a second. So with these settings, we'll grab that again and see what we get. There, that's much better. That's much more like uh, the sort of thing that I want. OK, so now, having captured those two images, it's just a matter of combining them together, which I'm going to do in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop, and I've loaded up the two images that I captured earlier. So this is the uh, flash head showing the uh, highlight running down the side. And this is the flash tube and the modeling light. So I want to combine these two images together. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a stack of those two images. So go to File come down to Scripts and load files into Stack. Ask it to add the open files and just click on OK. There we are. So now I have uh, a new file at the top here, uh, which will be uh, this stack of these two images on separate layers. So to combine the two, uh, what I want to do is just change the blending mode uh, of the top layer here from normal to something that will give me the effect of a double exposure. So any of the lighten uh, commands will do that. So any of these, so this is um, just a straight lighten. Then you have screen, color dodge, linear dodge, etc. Uh, now, I think... Um, most of these work quite well. I do like the lightened one. Uh, I just think that adds a little bit to it. So that's what I'm going to go with. And obviously, because I didn't move the camera between the two images, the whole thing lines up very well. Right, so that's it really, as far as the processing for this image is concerned. It just remains to uh, pick a crop. So I'm going to uh, pick 16 by 9, as this will be destined for the video, uh, and basically just move that ever so slightly in a little, I think. Uh, there's very little to do to this at all. Might just move it down a little in the frame. Just like that. I think that looks quite nice. We'll just click on OK. And there we have it. That's um, quite an arty picture of a flash head. Uh, but it does show exactly how the whole thing works and how it all goes together. Uh, and I think that makes uh, quite a nice, interesting study. OK, well, I hope you like watching how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.